Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. I'm down in Gosford, New South Wales at the Australian Reptile Park. Let's go inside and see what they've got going on. You're watching Snake Bites. So I'm in Gosford, New South Wales at the Australian Reptile Park, about to go inside to have another day of adventure. So far this trip's been amazing. Let's go ahead and see what today brings. What species of spiders does the Guinness Book of World Records say is the most venomous spider? A, the daddy long leg, B, the black widow, or C, the Brazilian wandering spider? Go ahead and answer down below in the comments and check back later in the show to see if you have the right answer. In this week's Reptile Report, we'll be highlighting Aussie pythons and snakes. Go ahead and check out the URL down below or click on the link in the description. Well, this certainly isn't the weather you think of when you think of early summer in Australia. Although the weather was somewhat uncooperative, it didn't stop the Australian Reptile Park from conducting business as usual. I'm not sure who was more miserable, the animals or me, but this pissing down rain and cold wasn't gonna stop me from enjoying this amazing park and their incredible animals. Now this is a real treat. It's one of the largest tortoises in the world. It's a Galapagos Island tortoise named Hugo. He's 63 years old and these guys can live well over 100 years so he's got a long way to go. And they are just really personable animals. When it comes to the tortoises, they're typically one of the coolest ones. And feeding this guy is a real treat, but you certainly have to watch your fingers because I tell you what, a bite from this guy would definitely take the tip off. But look at amazing, that thing is so cool. Again, it's pretty cool to be all the way in Australia messing with a glop. <laughs> oh buddy, you're so cute. What we have here is a Tasmanian devil, or a little Tazzy. They're endemic to the island of Tasmania. Unfortunately, there's a terrible thing happening right now. There's a virulent cancer, or contagious cancer, going on that's wiping out the population. It causes terrible, ulcerous tumors in their mouth and leaves them unable to feed. Now, fortunately, the mainland of Australia has none of this virulent cancer, and there's some ARC projects called the Devil's Ark that are now breeding them in captivity in hopes to eventually reintroduce them into the wild when they have gone extinct from this cancer. Now, there's about two to 300 specimens in the ARC project now, with about 40 being produced this year. Now, they're marsupials, and this little guy is named Bub. They'll live the first three or four months in a pouch and eventually will come out. This guy is six months old. And again, they're really cute and cuddly at this age. When they're about a year old, they get really nasty, and that's why they're called devils. I tell you what, I'm so glad that there's a good future for these guys in the midst of such a horrible, horrible cancer. This is a common wombat endemic to east side of Australia. Her name is Ruby and she's 12 months old. Now she's only about 10 kilos now, but she's going to max out at four times that size at about 40 kilos. Now that's a heavy animal already. You can just imagine it when it's an adult and they can run super fast, up to 40 kilometers an hour. And I'm told when you go in the cage, you definitely want to protect yourself because they are big time head butters. And you can certainly tell from these really massive claws that they're big time diggers. I've actually been told by the keepers that if you don't have a concrete floor, it's gonna dig its way out because they are huge burrowers. But I tell you what, that's one gorgeous animal. I think I'm falling in love with Ruby. The Australian Reptile Park is home to tons of amazing animals, but Elvis, the 18-foot salty, has to be the showstopper. Each day they put on a feeding demonstration, and trust me, that's worth the price of admission on its own. They also have this amazing entrance into the reptile display. Not only do they have so many incredible Australian species, but they're one of the few Australian zoos that can display exotics from around the globe. But it's not all reptiles. There's one place where I really get to face my fears, Spider World. You guys know how I 
feel about spiders. I'm still pretty terrified of them, and right now I'm surrounded by them. I'm at the Venom Milking Lab for funnel web spiders at the Australian Reptile Park. Now, Southeast Australia has a major issue with funnel webs. They bite about 30 people a year, and when they envenomate them, it can be very serious and even cause death if not giving antivenom. Fortunately, there hasn't been any fatalities since the antivenom was developed. And right here at the park is the only venom milking lab in all of Australia. Now, fortunately, the aggressive nature of the funnel web makes them very easy to milk their venom. All you have to do is put them down, get them really pissed off with a pair of hemostats, and suck off the venom with a pipette. Now, it may sound a little bit arduous to do it, but the truth is there's really no danger in it. Funnel webs can't jump and can't climb. As long as they're in an enclosed area, it's relatively low risk and an effective way to get the venom to produce this life-saving antivenom. My producer thought it'd be a great idea to head into the wild in search of these deadly aggressive spiders. What could possibly go wrong with this idea? This is funnel web country and it's absolutely teeming with them. It's the perfect environment. Now the males are six times more potent than females venom, so we certainly want to stay away from those little buggers. And it's pretty easy to tell the males from the females because the females are going to have big rumps. You can pretty much flip over almost any rock in this area and you're probably going to find a web. And all you have to do is trail the web back to the actual little spider. So let's go ahead and see if there's any webs under this rock right here. Ah, there is, there's one right here, check this out. Funnel webs make their burrows in moist, cool, sheltered habitats, typically under rocks, and rotting logs or in rough bark trees. A funnel web's burrow characteristically has these silk trip lines radiating from the entrance. It's just a matter of following them back to the spider itself. And there it is, and trust me, it's one pissed off spider. I'm glad the camera wasn't on me, because I might have been crying a little. These guys won't hesitate to bite, and as for me, I think I'll stick to tackling things with less than eight legs. What species of spider does the Guinness Book of World Records say is the most venomous spider? If you answered C, the Brazilian wandering spider, you're 100% correct. Good job. Hey guys, in case you didn't already know, the Olympic Games do begin this weekend and I'm pretty excited. It's kind of fun to watch all the different sports and I want to know, do you guys watch the Olympics? Do you not care about it? I think since we went curling for our Christmas party, I'm pretty much an expert now, so that's going to be really fun to watch. And of course, I love hockey. So leave a comment below and let us know. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. They certainly have some amazing animals at the Australian Reptile Park. And as always, I was Facebook and tweeting my way through. So make sure to follow me over at Snake Bites TV. Till next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. <laughs>